Hello, everybody, and welcome to this week's episode of The County Seat. I'm your host, Chad Booth. Today, we're going to talk about roads. From the busiest intersection of the capital city to the most remote parts of rural Utah, roads are how we get around. They make up county transportation systems, which feed into state highways and get us from point A to point B. But proving ownership of the roads is a fairly complex thing. One would think it's simple. You look at a map, yep, there's a road there. But there's a great deal of work that goes into proving ownership of a road and a great deal of work that goes into collecting the evidence to prove that the road is even there. Here, that is the topic of our story today on the county seat. Here with that story is Terry Wood. You probably heard that old philosophical question, if a tree falls in the woods and there's no one around to hear it, does it really make a sound? Well, you could use that same analogy with roads. If a road isn't mapped, is it really a road? That's a question a lot of Utah counties are asking these days. So they're using the latest in high-tech gadgetry combined with cartography, maps, both new and old, pictures from outer space to pioneer maps, all to get an accurate inventory of their roads. Sevier County's using this technology. You need to start GPSing those roads. You need to start taking photographs of those roads. And you also uh, do historical research on historical maps, surveys, and that type of thing to establish when that road first existed, if you, if you can know that, or at least that it existed in 1976 or before. And that's primarily for the RS-2477. However, this process is extremely important for the counties individually in many other areas of road man you know, management of their inventory, 911, wilderness, um, RS-2477, of course, is a very important part. Management is extremely important, so you need to have a good, in good inventory. RS-2477 is a designation that means a road crosses federal lands, but is the property and responsibility of the county. Currently, several court battles are in full swing around the state regarding RS-2477 claims. If counties are able to document their roads now, as RS-2477, with all the proper historical data and modern surveys, they could possibly avoid litigation in the future. The counties aren't starting the collection of this information from scratch. There already is an inventory of roads out there. The job now is accurately assembling that information into something that the county is able to use for its purpose. Other government agencies have similar data on roads, such as the Bureau of Land Management and Forest Service. However, their documentation does not fit the parameters of the county. That's their data. It's unique to what they, their needs and what they do. They have different agendas, different purposes, different ways of identifying things, and it may not serve what the particular county needs. If they're your roads, you need to own them. You need to uh, be able to identify, know the history on them, um, be able to do everything that you can to establish their existence. The end result is a very powerful management tool for the county, regardless of how you use that data. It is crucial that, they, that each county understand and have control of their inventories. Future growth and development plans are central to the information gathering, but in the short term, public safety is the real focus. We confirmed and established the residences and their proper addresses and road names, road identification, and then they go ahead and do some additional programming and install it in our 911 system. The process involved is called Geographic Information Systems, GIS. One facet of GIS is a global positioning device called a Trimble, which is more accurate than your typical consumer GPS unit. The end result is uh, what you're taking a look at, you can get somebody to come in and not totally understand what GIS is, but will understand the end result. They'll be able to see the road on the ground, they'll be able to see the photos that are attached, and for management, it's invaluable because they can make certain decisions based on that information. If they can, and as soon as they can, maybe get into a GIS program and use that as a tool for management, it'll widen their uh, abilities to be able to look at information in a more effective way for the welfare of the people of the county and in Utah also. Now, unlike the old axiom of the tree falling in the woods, a pathway or road does physically exist, whether it's mapped or not. 
However, once it's accurately cataloged, it becomes more than just a road. It's a lifeline, a destination, a pathway to the future. We'll delve more into these RS-2477 issues later in our roundtable discussion and look at the impact GIS could have on access disputes. For the county seat, I'm Terry Wood. Thank you for that report. We will continue our discussion of collecting information for roads, the GIS system, and we'll find out what you do with all that data once you get it collected, or at least what the state and counties are planning to do. We'll be right back on the county seat. The State of Utah School and Institutional Trust Lands Administration. CITLA manages 3.5 million acres of Utah lands with the express purpose of furthering the education of Utah students while promoting local industry, oil and gas, even residential development, all at the same time. Through the careful use of trust lands, we distributed more than $22 million to Utah schools last year. The State of Utah School and Institutional Trust Lands Administration, building the state's permanent school fund. Almost 45% of the oil produced in Utah, 7.8 million barrels, comes from Duchesne County. That oil feeds our state economy, provides job growth, and supports local business. Here in Duchesne County, we're working to make Utah an economic, cultural, and technological leader. Whether you're here for business or pleasure, Duchesne County will welcome you with open arms and invite you to explore all the beauty of the Uinta Mountains. Duchesne County, close enough for business, far enough to get away. If you look up epic in the dictionary, it's defined as heroic, majestic, or impressively great. Here in Kane County, Utah, we don't need a dictionary to tell us that. We live it every day. Stop reading about life and start experiencing it in Kane County. ATV adventures, Jeep excursions, hike a world where the Old West was yesterday and tomorrow is just over the horizon. Kane County, Utah, where epic is more than just a word, it's our way of life. What are the words that describe the perfect destination? Finding them all in one place is easy if you know where to look. Millard County in the heart of Utah offers ATV adventures, rock crawling events, art festivals, and nature at its most epic. Millard County, Utah. Find out what you've been searching for. 